isn't. Dad remembered about the spelling. Three weeks after the parent-teacher conference, he asked me how I'd been doing with my grades. So I showed him the last one. Seven. Seven words. The best I'd ever done. Kalista gave me two whole chocolate donuts after I showed her. But I knew by the look on Dad's face when he saw that C grade at the top that I wasn't getting any donuts from him. I only missed three words, I told him. My voice was a squeak. That's seven, right? Which is almost all of them. Almost, Albie, Dad said slowly, putting the test down on the table. Isn't nearly good enough. Being cool. Here's what it's like to be cool. Cool kids play Pokemon by the drinking fountains before school starts. I found that out on Monday when I got to school. Darren saw me walking up the steps and pulled me over. I never knew that the cool kids did that before. No one told me. I always thought about drinking fountains were just for drinking. Cool kids don't raise their hands to answer questions in class. That's what Darren told me. I like that rule because I hardly ever know the answer to Mrs. Rouse's questions anyway. Maybe I was cool all along, and I never realized it. At recess, the cool kids play tetherball, which it turns out I'm sort of okay at. The only thing I don't like about being cool was that I couldn't sit next to Betsy at lunch because Darren said cool kids didn't sit next to kids who weren't cool, and Darren said Betsy definitely wasn't cool. Maybe she is cool, I said when we were all grabbing our lunches from our cubbies. Betsy was frowning at me talking to Darren, and I didn't like it. She never raises her hand in class either. Darren snorted. Buh, buh, buh. Betsy, he said, is not cool. I was starting to think I didn't get what was cool and what wasn't. I told Darren I needed to talk to Mrs. Rouse about something, and I said I'd meet him in the lunchroom, but I didn't really have to talk to the teacher. That was a lie. After Darren left, I made sure no one was looking, and I snuck over to Betsy's cubby, where she was busy unstuffing her coat. Hi, I said. She didn't say anything, which was pretty normal, but usually she looked at me while she didn't say anything, and this time she wasn't looking at me, so that didn't seem normal at all. I didn't like it. Hey, um, Betsy, do you know how to play Pokemon? I asked her. Betsy did look up at me then, and she looked confused, mad, which was not a look that made me happy. I did my best to try to explain to her. Because all the cool kids play Pokemon, I said, and I'm cool now, so I'm learning it. And I thought if you knew too, then you could be cool with me, and then we could still sit next to each other at lunch. Wouldn't that be good? I thought it sounded good. Anyway, if you don't know Pokemon, I could try to teach it to you. When I get better, I mean. I'm still not very good at it. I must not have been doing a very good job explaining about Pokemon and being cool and lunch and everything because Betsy went from looking confused mad to just mad mad, which was even worse. But I didn't get a chance to explain any better because Betsy started talking then, and even though it took her a long time to get the words out, Longer than normal, I waited for her to say what she wanted and didn't interrupt because Betsy hated when you interrupted her before she was done, and I was nice and cool. N -n 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 no, that's what she told me. Y you are n -n -n cool. I couldn't believe I waited for that. Then she stormed off to the lunchroom. She forgot her lunch bag in her cubby, and I thought about bringing it to her, but then I decided not to. I wasn't feeling very nice right then. Just cool. That afternoon was the first lunch of the whole school year where I didn't get any gummy bears. Still. What the heck is your sister doing in there anyway? I asked Erlen when I went over at his apartment. We were playing Operation, only we couldn't play it in the quilt fort because Erlen's sister, Anir, was in there crying. She broke up with her boyfriend or something. Erlen told me. She won't shut up about it either. That made me so surprised I dropped the funny bone I was tweezering out and the game buzzed at me. She has a boyfriend? I asked. She's only in seventh grade. Erlan took the tweezers. She's in eighth, he said. He got the funny bone easy. And she doesn't have a boyfriend anymore. That's what she's so upset about. Oh. Anyway, she's being a real baby. They only went out for like a week. He said that loud enough for Anir 
to hear him from inside the fort. You shut up, Erlin, she shouted at him. Erlin handed me the tweezers, and I looked for the best bone to remove, the Adam's apple or the Charlie horse or the butterflies in the stomach. I don't think I'll ever go out with anyone, I told Erlan. It sounds awful. He rolled his eyes. You don't even know. Yesterday, Anir spent two hours deleting all the photos of him off her phone. Two hours. You know how many photos that is? They only went out a week. I'm going to punch you, Erlan, Anir screamed. No, you won't, Erlan shouted back, because you'd have to come out here to do it, and then I'd get my fort back. Anir didn't leave the fort the whole time I was there. Erlan and I played four games of Operation, and she just cried the whole time. Do you still have any pictures of Gus on your phone? I asked Kalista the next day after school. She seemed surprised when I asked her that, but sort of happy too. Sure, she said. She pulled her phone out of her pocket. You want to see them? She started to thumb through the photos. I shook my head. No, thanks, I said. Can we go visit Hugo and get my donut now? Kalista frowned, but she put her phone back in her pocket. Yeah, okay, she told me. That's how I figured out that Kalista still had a boyfriend. Tetherball. Now that I was cool, I ate lunch with Darren and the other cool kids and played tetherball with them, too. I was all right at tetherball, even if I did flinch once when I thought the ball was going to whack me in the head and Candace Sims laughed at me. At lunchtime, all us cool kids would eat our lunches super-duper fast so we could go outside to meet Sage Moore at the tetherball courts. Sage was Darren's best friend, but he couldn't eat at our same table because he had to eat at the egg-free one with the allergy kids. I didn't mind not having to eat lunch with Sage Moore so much. Do you like carrot squash? Sage asked me on Friday when the two of us were next to each other in line waiting for our turn to play tetherball. The way he asked me about it, I felt like I was taking a test, like there was only one right answer to the question and he already knew I was going to get it wrong. I don't know, I said slowly. I didn't want to get the answer wrong, but I didn't want to lie either. I've never had it. Sage laughed so hard when I said that, that he started to choke on his own spit. Oh my gosh, he said between chokes. You've never had it? Candace reached around me in line and pounded on Sage's back to stop the choking, I guess. I hadn't even thought to do that, to pound on Sage's back to help him stop choking. Then again, I didn't really care if Sage Moore choked so much. That was not a very nice thing to think, maybe, but it was true. Carrot squash isn't a food, Darren told me. Darren was so good at tetherball that he could play and talk at the same time. It's a video game, he said, and he whacked the ball. Whack! Nasem Johnson whacked it back. Whack! It's really cool. Whack! You'd like it. Whack! You're a rabbit. Whack! And you go around killing talking carrots. Whack! That commit crimes. Whack! When they die, all their carrot juice splatters everywhere. The rope wrapped around the pole too high for Nassism to get it, and Darren beat her.